Rohit? Yes, we are live now. Okay, great. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this week's uh, masterclass on how to go about doing your video pitch. We have Malvika here. Um, Ankita will give a short introduction about uh, Malvika, and then we will start the session. Thanks. Yes, yeah, so thank you, ma'am, for uh, agreeing to be part of the session and, and uh, you know, educating everyone on what, how to go about the link canvas in the pitch video. So for uh, those who are not aware of what Moam has been involved, in, involved with, so Malvika, ma'am, has founded Brand Circle, a consultancy firm working in the areas of digital communication, business storytelling, and may have been mentoring startups and women entrepreneurs. After her accountancy training and MBA from IIM Bangalore, uh, she has joined HMT Watches. She then ran her own interior design and packaging firms before founding Sachi in 1993. She was also one of the first Gurukul Shevening scholars selected by the British government for a special program in the London School of Economics on globalization. She is the first woman to win the Distinguished Alumni Award from IIM Bangalore. I'm sorry, I have had a problem with the system. She's also on the board of governors. I am Vizag, the governing council of Mount Carmel College and on the advisory board of the NSR of I am Bangalore, where she's actively involved in mentoring startups in the profit and nonprofit sectors. She was the president of IMB Alumni Association and the Advertising Club of Bangalore. Her current focus is mentoring women executives and entrepreneurs to reach their full potential. Okay. So Ma'am has also been teaching marketing and communication at various postgraduate institutes of management for the last 25 years because she believes in sharing knowledge is the only way to learn. So Ma'am, I uh, want you to take it forward from here. Okay. Thank you so much. And um, it's so nice to be talking to so many women across the country. I only wish we could do it in person, but thanks to COVID, um, we'll have to do it digitally, but I hope I have the pleasure and honor of meeting all of you at some stage. Um, I'm not partial to women, as you can make out, but I strongly believe that entrepreneurship is one of the ways that women can reach their full potential, particularly because we are so adept at keeping our homes going, keeping our families going. Uh, and if you just apply the same principles to entrepreneurship, believe me, you will be the next unicorns. So without um, more of your taking more of your time, I'm going to spend a little bit, uh, the next 30 minutes or so, talking about what you need to do in your pitch presentation. I understand you have to make a three minute video and a small note about your idea. Some of you are in early stage. Some of you are already uh, have already started your ventures. So it doesn't really matter. What matters, and this is something I want to share with you all ladies, is the passion that you bring to the party. So my uh, what I'm going to talk about, since I am a communications uh, person, I've been a communications person all my life, um, is how you create a pitch video for maximum impact, right? And I deliberately underline the word maximum because that's what you've got to do. You've got to convince the NSR cell, you've got to convince your investors that you are worth spending time and money on. So that is your ROI. And the way you pitch is, needs to be relevant. It needs to be original and it needs to be impactful. And that's what I'm going to share with you. Um, there, is, there are some frameworks that I, I have included in my presentation, which will be useful to you, not just for this video, but for your own presentations um, going forward. Um, I've also asked the NSRSL team uh, to share this presentation with you uh, after the session so that you have it as a reference point. I believe in very practical knowledge. I always believe in knowledge with a purpose. And that's what I'm going to share with you, my many years in advertising and in communication. I've created what is called a SMART framework, 
for creating a smart pitch video, and it has five parts. You need to spend about 40% of your time before you actually do this video planning. Please plan your video very, very carefully. Design it well. Make it look aesthetic and then create it. Practice, practice the whole, uh, whatever you're going to say, and then deliver it clearly. So these are the five buckets um, and the five pillars of creating a smart pitch video. And I'm going to go into each one of them um, for, for your benefit. Who are you talking to? Right? Who is your audience? Why do you want to talk to them? And what is the message that you want to deliver? And this is something I want you to spend a little bit of time on. You're talking to the mentors and the, the, the faculty and the professors at the NSR cell. They are your audience and as well as your, um, our younger team managers, right? So you're presenting to them. What is your intent? You want to get incubated, right? You want to be incubated at the NSR cell. And believe me, I'm again, I'm not biased, though I am from I am Bangalore. It is one of the best uh, places to be incubated in. You get a lot of freedom uh, to work in. And what is it that you want to convey? You want to convey this idea that is bubbling inside you, right? You want to convey it to the external world in a way that they will understand. So please understand this. The pitch is not for you. The pitch is for your audience. And this is something I want you to keep in mind. You are talking to an audience. So right now I can't see you at all, all right? But I'm talking to my camera. According to me, my camera is, is my audience and therefore I'm talking to my camera and you need to do the exact same thing, particularly because now we can't do a live pitch. All right, so audience, your intent, and what is the message that will interest this audience to take you on as an incubatee? So I want you to spend the time sitting down and scripting your video. And I'm gonna give you lots of tips on how to do that. You're designing, as I mentioned, and I keep saying this to all my students and my mentees, you're designing for the audience, not for you. So you need to set the right context with your video. What's in it for them? What will interest them to even listen to your video? Especially today when we are living in an attention deficit world, people give you whatever, 10 seconds, 30 seconds. And if you cannot connect with them in that time, they just move away. Think about yourself. Don't you do the same thing? If you don't get what you want, if you don't get what you want to understand, 30 seconds, you don't even bother. You just swip the channel or go to another website, right? So when we're looking at a, at a context like that, your uh, video should have a hook. It should very clearly answer what's in it for them. And when I say them, I'm talking about your audience. Why should they listen to you? What is interesting in your video and what makes you different from all the other ladies who are going to be pitching for the same thing, right? And this is something I want you to keep in mind when you are designing your video script. Next step, you need a structure. The video cannot be all over the place. Remember, you've got exactly three minutes. So it needs to have a beginning, a middle and an end. Right? So there has to be a value proposition. It has to be backed up by how you're going to do it. And lastly, with any data that you may have. I've given you a tentative structure that you can follow and adapt. But please understand, one of the things, the, one of the mistakes we make is you're very passionate about your product. I know that. Or your service. You're very passionate about your enterprise. You're very passionate about your idea. But please remember that your audience is not so passionate. They don't care. So you have to make them care. That's the trick of creating a piece of communication. You have to make them care. You have to make them listen to you. And one of the most important things is there has to be a structure. Because in your head, you're perfectly clear about what you're saying. But please remember, your audience may not be so. And that is your purpose as a presenter and a communicator. 
start with a story. I have this amazing little mentee, and she's really little, she's five feet. You may have heard of her, Alina Alam. And I have another mentee called Pooja Rai. Both of them are young women. They're doing exceedingly well because they start with a story. Alina is one of the best natural storytellers I have seen. And that is something you please, please do watch her on YouTube. You will get a lot of inspiration from the young lady, um, as you will from Pooja Rai. Very interesting the way they tell their story. So I want you to create a story, right? You're telling a story, you're talking to your camera. How would you speak to your friends? And that is exactly the spirit that I want you to bring into your video. Of course, there has to be a structure. You can't ramble because you've got three minutes and you will be cut off after that. I want you to start strong. And the way you start strong is with a personal story, bring you into it and end strong with your elevator pitch or your vision. All right. So this is the way you actually tell the story. I've given you a content format. All right. And I'm just going to take you very quickly through it. Who are you? Introduce yourself. Start with a story about how you thought of this idea. Right? So a little story. If you don't have a story, make one up. Right? Nobody's going to know whether you made it up or I'm sorry, I'm not encouraging you to lie. But make it interesting. The point I'm trying to say is make it interesting. What are the challenges? Who's your consumer? And what are the challenges or pain faced by your potential consumer? At this point, you have met, I know according to the Lean Canvas, you're supposed to have met customers and done interviews with them. What did they say to you? Are there any quotations there that you can use? Do you have any data from secondary research that you've done? Use this to build up your claim, right? And what is it that you do? You are creating something. So this is what is called your value proposition or your elevator pitch, right? So in 30 seconds, you need to tell the audience what you do. How do you plan to do it? How Now, suppose you're saying you're going to start an office uh, service, some service for an office. How do you plan to do it? What is your plan of action? Do you Have you thought it through or you just coming out with a vague idea. People like you to be as precise. We understand that you are in the early stages, but you should have thought through things so that you seem to be in control of the situation. Where do you want this enterprise of yours to go? What is your vision? Do a quick recap. And finally, thank your audience and end with a smile. Now, I don't want you to grin like this, all your teeth showing, no. Smile naturally, but do smile. It makes such a difference to your presentation. Now, once I've gone through this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually do a mock for you so that you will understand where I'm coming from. I'm very particular. I think the NSR cell, all the project managers who work, work with me, call me the value proposition lady. And I do this for a purpose. What is it that your product does for the consumer? What You are like a Dolo 65. You're like an aspirin, right? You're taking away the pain point for your consumer. And you're going to do this better than anyone else. And that is why consumers will buy you. And that is why your idea will fly. So the example I've given you on the slide is for a computer application called Evernote, right? So Evernote is for busy professionals who are always on the move and need to stay organized. So look at the way we have smartly defined our consumer and their requirement. Evernote is the most user-friendly computer app. As for customer reviews, you're not saying it. The customers are saying so. That allows you to maintain or to save all your thoughts, ideas, instructions, and to-do lists so they are available to you, the busy professional, anytime, anywhere, and on any device. And this is what I define as a value proposition. The um, 
shall I say, the discipline of the value proposition is that you need to say this in 30 seconds and use exactly one sentence. So I've got to read this out again um, so that you're all very clear about where I'm coming from. And you need to do this exercise uh, if you haven't done it already before you actually write your video script. This should be part of your video script. It's also called your elevator pitch. So just imagine if you meet someone in an elevator in a lift and they ask you what you do, and there's 30 seconds before you go from one floor to the another, this is what you're going to say. This is what everybody in your organization will say once you grow. For busy professionals who are always on the move and need to stay organized, Evernote is the most user-friendly computer application as rated by consumers that allows you to save all your thoughts, ideas, instructions, and to-do lists. So they are available to you anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Now, the way you deliver your value proposition makes all the difference. Don't read out. This is something you say. If you forget a couple of words, so be it. Doesn't matter. It has to come from your heart, right? And that's all I want to leave you with. You, you must practice this because this is going to be one, this is going to be the pivot on which you're going to run your whole organization. This is what your organization or your idea is all about. So I have my consumer, I have the pain point, I have my product, which takes away that pain and does it better than anyone else. So in this case, the co consumer ratings are what make me better than competition. You have a time limit, you have three minutes, and I think we're being very generous. A lot of pitches today are one frame, 30 seconds, or one frame, one minute. So three minutes is a long time. Now, we Indians speak pretty fast, but don't speak like this, it's too much. Speak in a measured way like I'm doing now. So your total script should not have more than 200 to 250 words, because you will get nervous. The moment the camera gets on, even at this age, after facing the camera so, so many times, I still feel a sense of panic when the camera starts. So I'm sure you will too. Um, you have six frames. Don't exceed this. And the reason I've taken six frames, when I say frames, it's one shot, right? So six frames, each frame roughly should take you about 30 seconds. So you have six frames. So this is your constraint area. This is what you have to work with. So if, once you have written out your script, correct it, play it, record yourself, and see whether you're meeting the time. Because please remember, if you do more than 200 words, you will exceed your time. Because we tend to speak soft. We tend to speak slowly sometimes, fast sometimes. And never do, never rush through your presentation. Because then people will wonder whether you're going to catch a bus. Do you get where I'm coming from? It sounds very, very unprofessional. So you need to speak in measured terms not very slowly uh, and not too fast. We Indians really race with uh, our words and nobody understands what we are saying. Use some visual elements. So I'm going to teach you how to do that, but use some visual. So if you have a picture of your to be customers, put them up. If you have some pictures of your background, if your unit is already in existence, if you have some pictures of your vendors, whatever it is, put them up, provided they are meaningful and relevant. And what I'm recommending is that you need to have some data points, okay? And for that, you need to have a PowerPoint slide, either PowerPoint or Prezi. Use fonts and colors. Don't make it fussy. Make it very, very simple. Create a standardized template which you can then use, which suits your personality. Don't fill it up with pictures and elements and don't decorate it, keep it simple. So if you look at my slides, what do you notice on them? They're extremely simple, are they not? I just use a touch of red because I love red. My bullets are red. I have my text in 24 or 28 point. My headline is in 44 point. This is my bindi, which is my brand identity. And I just like to have a little fun with it. And then I called it the name of the series. So here you could have your own name or the name of your enterprise. All right. So keep it simple. Next point, use infographics. So if you know what infographics are, simple graphs. You can even use a simple chart. I, I'm giving you one example, provided it's readable. This, I think, is a little cluttered. Make it simpler. If you want to use any data, you want to show data, Show data 
interestingly. All right. But don't make it so small that you can't read it. A lot of stuff that you see on these slides, especially smart art, is so tiny that you need to give a telescope with it, even on a screen. So be careful about the font size. Uh, just as a tip, use 44 for your headline and use 24 to 28 for your body copy. That's the only thing which is very clearly visible. Deliver right. Use your voice effectively, right? Don't swallow your words. It's better to be deliberate than to say, oh, I, you know, I'm thinking, no, no, no. don't whisper, don't shout. Speak as you would normally. And your cameras today, your smartphone cameras are pretty good. If you're having a problem with sound, use a small lapel mic, all right? But don't shout. We tend to speak very loudly. So speak correctly. The, for example, the volume that I'm speaking at would be correct. Don't rush. You're not catching a bus. And don't drone on. So don't, for heaven's sake, read from somewhere. And don't mug it up and recite it like a poem. That's not expected either. Use your own words. If you need to do another take, that's just fine. Use your own words and let the human part of you come through. Let the human part and the passion come through. I always, I love this little saying by Simon Sinek, which says people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And that's why I keep saying, it is the passion which matters and the what's in it for them that needs to come through in your pitch. Pronounce words correctly. We are in an English speaking business world, fortunately or unfortunately, I do not know. If you are doubtful about a particular word, don't mangle it. There is always what is called an audio dictionary. Just check the pronunciation, especially with the longer words. Um, we are not Shashi Tharoor. Shashi Tharoor can pronounce any word correctly. He's one of my heroes, by the way, only for his speaking and intellectual abilities, not for the rest. But pronunciation is something that you must pay attention to. All right. Pronounce words correctly. Your body language, I know we are restricted, but when you're doing your video, try and stand up and do it, not sitting like I'm doing. As I said, make eye contact with the camera. Talk to the camera. Think it is a human being. Connect with your audience. That's your audience, right? So smile with your eyes, smile with your face, and have a conversation. How do you speak to friends? You don't glare at them, right? You speak to them normally. Just be natural. Use your hands if you can. If you're nervous about using hands, like a lot of us are, use it, keep your hands lightly clasped in front of your chest, not below, not the steeple position. Keep it lightly clasped in front of you if you don't know what to do with them. If you are naturally, if you naturally use your hands a lot, go ahead and do that. But don't wave it around like a windmill. Be careful about that. Amy Cuddy, who's a social psychologist, says that if you pose with power, even if you're feeling frightened inside you, if you pose and you look confident, people will accept you at face value. And this is why body language is so important. So even if you're trembling and dying inside, don't show it. Look confidently and speak. And after all, nobody can correct you. It's your company, right? So if you make a few mistakes, there's no one to say it is right or wrong. My advice, use a smartphone uh, with a tripod, all right? Because don't let someone wander around or don't do that selfie with the reverse camera. See if you can get a small tripod and put it on that, the phone on that. It's good enough to shoot this. And some of our smartphones are much better than a laptop. Have a light facing you. I have a light facing me right now. Let me switch it off and show it, show you how it would look. I just have a backlight then, right? So this is how I look without the light. And this is how I look with the light. Just a simple table lamp, which reflects on your face. So you avoid the shadows. Dress very, use a virtual background if you have one. 
or a plain one. I've created a little background for myself, which I use. Right? You could use a picture of your company if you have it already, a plain background or a virtual background. Don't make it very fussy. Make it very simple, elegant. Maybe you have your logo in the corner. Right? It's easily done on any, any smartphone. Dress simply and elegantly. Avoid red and orange. Red and orange bleeds on the camera. Avoid that. Keep your makeup very, very simple, right? Don't overdo it. All I mean, for example, what I, I just have a little eye makeup. I have my bindi, which I'm never without, and I have a lipstick. That's it. If you want, do a little highlighting to fix any blemishes that you may have. But don't go to a beauty parlor and get bridal makeup. It looks terrible. Keep it natural. It, you shouldn't look as if you're made up. Keep your jewelry minimum. So don't have huge dangly earrings and 43 rings. Just wear a simple chain, maybe a couple of rings and a bangle. Keep it very, very elegant and simple. The idea is that people should be listening to you and not pricing your jewelry. Use the video app on your phone. It's good enough for recording you. And if you have slides to show, my advice is to use PowerPoint, right? Uh, try not to use, or there are more complicated video capture, screen capture software. I would recommend just stay with PowerPoint because it's easiest to use, right? So where you have slides to show and you want to record your voice over it, PowerPoint has a recorded, has a record facility, so you can do it directly. And then you've shot your uh, video on a, on a uh, phone, merge the two. I'm sure you'll have some young relatives who can do it for you. Otherwise, you can just embed the video into PowerPoint and save it as a .pptm and it'll work fine. Or as a PPS, it works fine, right? And then upload it. You can save it as a video. Not a problem at all. Don't get overwhelmed by technology. Just make it simple. The idea of this presentation that NSRCell is asking you to do is to see whether you have that passion within you and you have that idea and you've thought your idea through so that you can be taken on as an incubator. Please remember that you have 30 seconds, though you have three minutes, you actually the first 30 seconds to make an impression, even in a video. And this is something I want you to remember, which is why your value proposition and the way you start your video is so, so important. I think uh, Professor Suresh has sent you a sample video of that young girl talking about some diet company, right? And she's done it very simply and neatly. There's nothing fancy about it. She's used a virtual background and she's talking into the camera, right? Uh, that's about all you need to do. Just follow my tips. Uh, you could record on Zoom as well. You can play, talk to Zoom. You can, uh, you get a free license for 40 minutes and unless you have one already and you can just record yourself on Zoom. The only problem that I have found with Zoom is there is always a time lag because of the internet connection. So if you have a good internet connection, Zoom is not a bad way of doing this recording because you can also show your uh, slides as you go along. But perhaps a video and a PowerPoint would have a better impact. You could figure it out. I don't think we're going to be very strict about that uh, because of today it's, it's tough to get a studio and you don't need to do that at all. Now, before I take questions, which I'd like you all to put on chat and my very enthusiastic team is going to read them out to me so that I can answer you. I'm going to go back a couple of slides. I'm going to just do a very short uh, demo of what you can do, right? right? All right. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes just to sh just to give you an example. It's it's something that just came into my head right now. I'm just going to present it to you and talk to you. And that's the way I would like your video to be. Good day to all of you. My name is Malavika Haritha. I live in Bangalore and I have been working for the last 35 years. During COVID, I realized 
what a skilled professional my maid was. And you know why? I couldn't do half the things she did. And my main problem was keeping my house spick and span. I'm very finicky about that. And how do you do that? How do I sweep under the beds, under the sofas? And how do I ensure that there is no dust or COVID germs lurking around? And that's when I came up with a thought. My robo maid. I'm not going to replace my maid. She's invaluable. I'm just waiting for her to come back. But I thought if I get her a robo maid, poor thing, she doesn't have to bend and struggle to keep my house clean. Robo maid will go anywhere it has to, under any sofa, at any bed, and keep it clean for me. Am I an IT technologist? No, I'm not. But in today's world, I know a lot of people in information technology and robotics who may be able to help me to build this product. And I can help with the branding and selling because I know the consumer best. The consumers are people like me, working professionals, um, who are very, very particular, very house proud. And God forbid we have another situation like COVID or we have a situation where we don't have our home help coming. How do we ensure that our homes are spick and span? And that is my vision for RoboMade. I know it's not going to be a product for everybody. Uh, the cost is going to be roughly, I was estimating similar products in the market, about 25 to 30,000. The difference between the products I've been looking at and the product we have is the dust in India. Um, so we need to have a mopping um, attachment with the robo uh, cop. My vision is that I make life easier, not just for other women like me who are probably not as fit as we should be. I have a large paunch and hence I cannot bend, but even for the people who work for me or even for hotels, where you have to keep every nook and corner of the place clean. And that's my vision for RoboMate. Thank you. Thank you for your time. So just some stuff that I thought, I don't have any numbers. I didn't have any numbers really. Just thought I would show you how it is done, right? So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned from it. I'll be happy now to take any questions that you may have. Um, thank you, Malvika, for that really crisp but uh, very effective um, insights that you share. Um, before we take the questions, a couple of people who um, uh, really thanked you, so I thought I will just read out uh, those feedbacks. Um, so one person said, you've evaporated all doubts and invoked such an incredible confidence in us. Um, another you. one has said it was very helpful and has given us so much confidence to a camera shy person. Um, so, okay, Arti, if I may just interject here. Yes. You know how to get over camera fright, ladies? Put a small little smiley next to where your camera is. If you, and I would recommend if you um, just put a small little sticker there, a little picture of your kid if you want to just right next to where the camera is. So then you keep automatically and psychologically smiling at it. It's a very simple trick, try it. Yeah, Arti, sorry, go ahead. No, that's great. I, I think that tip really helped me too. So. <laughs> Absolutely. And being a younger person, you can probably have your partner, your loved one there as well. Yeah? Yes. That will surely make you smile. That covers the boys as well. <laughs> okay. So on that note, um, I will take the first question. Um, I think many of them got confused when you talked about six frames. If you can just elaborate what you meant by six frames, uh, that will help them out. Okay. You normally take about 30 seconds. So I'm, I'm going back to say, suppose you're making a, a slide presentation. You normally take about 30 seconds for each slide, right? That is the normal time. So I'm converting that into a video frame. So please remember that when you are speaking, you shouldn't be speaking for more than about 30 seconds. 
at a time. So you, you, ha you have to capsule yourself into 30 second bits. And that's why you get six frames because you've totally got 180 seconds or three minutes. That's what I mean by a frame. Because if you keep that too long and you speak too long, you will lose attention. So in between intersperse with say a slide or a different movement or change the pitch a little bit, right? Because people's attention spans are 30 seconds. That's how I built this. Um, so the next question is on the uh, video recording itself. Uh, what some of them want to know is, should it be fully video? Should we include presentation? Should it be animation, voiceover? Um, what is right? What is wrong there? Okay. Don't complicate your lives. And you don't need, we're not looking for film star or film quality here. We are looking for a video about you as a human being. My recommendation is just do it on your smartphone. And today, in today's COVID days, it is actually very unsafe to go to any studio. So just do it at home. I, I've set up a little studio for myself. You just need a tripod. You can even prop it up on a book. That's okay, as long as you, it's just above eye level. So when you're putting your camera, just ensure, like my camera is, it's not direct here, so I'm not looking down. I'm looking slightly up, right? Also not too up like that. I'm not looking up like that. I'm just looking at a few inches above my eye level. So that of course my double chin doesn't show, but for you, that you're just looking up a little bit and talking to the camera. So my recommendation is use a smartphone, but use a combination of smartphone and slides. Don't make the graphics and all complicated. Don't detract from yourself and your presentation. Don't detract from you. The moment you add in, every element that you add into the video will detract from you. It's a minus one. So I would recommend just use PowerPoint or Prezi. It's simple enough. Record your voice on it. Uh, when you're showing it, you have your voice. Keep it as your voice, not someone else's voice. Keep your voice, show the slide, go back to the video. So intersperse and cut between your video and slides. Don't get into complicated animations and graphics. You will be wasting a lot of money and a lot of time and you don't really achieve too much. There's the, the additional value add very little. Um, so the next question is again on the video presentation itself. Um, should they include the numbers while pitching? Um, is it a good thing to include it or not? If you've got authentic numbers, please add the numbers. But please remember, always have the source of the number. So either it's based on a survey that you've done with so many people, or it's based on some authentic newspaper reports, wherever you got the data from, please put it, put the source down. So if you have got good source data, nothing like it, use it, but provide it. And ladies, this is something I want to tell you that data has to be relevant to your story. See, one of the mistakes we make is we fall in love with our product, obviously we are, we have to be, otherwise you wouldn't be doing a startup. We fall in love with our presentation and then we want to put everything into it with the result that we communicate nothing. So please remember one simple principle, I'm going to share that with you. It sounds a little rude, but it's the KISS principle, K-I-S-S. -S. And it says, keep it simple, stupid. The, way, the word stupid is not disrespectful here. It is just saying that your audience may not be on the same wavelength as you. So keep it as simple as you can. Don't complicate. The moment you complicate stuff, again, I come back to my uh, idol, Shashi Tarun. He's the only person I know who can speak the way he can without confusing everybody around him, or maybe he does it deliberately. Don't try to do that. Keep it simple. Keep your language simple. Don't, don't complicate with too many things in it. Um, so another question is, um, most of them have done their customer validation and collected customer feedback. Yes. They want to know how that can be presented as part of their pitch video. Okay. If you've got pictures of your customers, see whether you can use that picture 
with a little quotation. Don't use customer videos because you don't have the time. Each video, your minimum is about 20 seconds. You won't have the time. It will eat into your presentation. If you can put a picture and a quote from that customer with the name, it's a good idea. If the customer has not given you the permission to do that, then just use the quote and make it say, homemaker, age 45, from Bangalore. Right? So you can use it both ways. But if you can actually put pictures, real pictures of the customer, it adds validity. So keep one slide, right? After you've spoken about the problem, showing your customer. Say, this is my customer, uh, Mrs. So-and-so, who's having this problem cleaning her home during COVID, right? And that's why we came up with the RoboMate. So use pictures if you can. Don't use video. You don't have time. And make it a quote. So whenever you're quoting a person, put an open quote and a close quote. So it looks like the person has said it. Try and use realistic language and keep the quote not more than two sentences. Right? So please use that. If you don't have quotes, then you can probably use graphs and say that so many people said so and so. That is a little less personal, but at least it's better than no data. So Malvika, there are a few startups um, who are already one to two years in the journey. Um, so in those cases, uh, since they are not doing customer validation at this point of time, how can they effectively cover the past and the present of their venture and also share their customer um, feedback with us in a three minute video? Okay. Uh, put, your, put your journey so far into a simple infographic started, incorporated, first customer, 30 customers, 100 customers, whatever. Put a simple timeline, just a circle and a line, and put your data on it. One simple chart. That's it. That's your timeline. You must have your value proposition, though, because you're already in the market. So you know the pain point of your customer. You've defined them. What is the pain point that your product is taking away better than everybody else? So that's one slide. So your timeline and your value proposition comes on one single slide. Okay, now your customer validation, you already validated, right? So after you have talked about your company, put down your customer testimonials. Again, don't use videos, please use uh, quotes. So you can do that after you have explained what your company does. Your timeline should be just a simple line at the bottom of the slide below your value proposition. So in your case, it's not an idea. You need to start with that story and go directly to your value proposition. Um, yes. Uh, one more question is, can I give example of my competitor and how they function in my pitch video? All right. Uh, is it really important? You can just say that we do have a lot of competition. Uh, but we believe that we are able to solve the problem better. Don't go into details and put a petal diagram and get into a lot of details. You don't waste the time uh, that you have on your competition. So my recommendation is if it is a highly competitive market and if the comp mentioning the competition is relevant to your growth or existence, then give them a brief mention. Right? But don't get into detail. Maybe you can just show a logo. Say some of our competitors, you can just say it by name. Some of our competitors are Hewlett Packard and Dell computers. But we believe, and this is the way I would handle it, right? So some of my competition or some of the competition we face is from um, multinational giants like Dell and HP. But I think our advantage is that we are much smaller, we are much nimbler, and we're definitely more economic. That's the way I would mention competition. Yeah. And uh, so many of them are uh, very camera shy. They have mentioned in, uh, in our chat box as well. So mm. Sumana wants to know that how to get out of the feeling, feeling of trembling inside and when you're shooting the video. What are the tips for you know shooting a three minutes video? Sumana, do a couple of dry runs, right? Just shoot, just for fun, just shoot and then watch yourself, record yourself and watch yourself back. Do two or three dry runs before you go ahead with the final shoot. 
Now, if you're nervous about speaking, keep a laptop in front of you or a desk screen, which has the words on it. So if you get stuck, you can just glance at it and glance back at the camera. A little bit of practice will help and see that there is nobody else in the room. So it doesn't make you more nervous. Now, if you, you know, if you kind of falter, just re-record it. And if there is a small glitch here and there, it's okay. You can always clip it when you're editing. Every, every camera has a software editing facility. You can just clip it up. But if you are nervous, do two or three dry runs and then record the file. Keep your text on a laptop, which you can see just, just by the side of the camera. So if you have, a, or just put a sheet of paper printed in big, uh, maybe 30 point or 40 points, so it's visible, just prop it up there. So if you have a doubt about something, you can just look, glance, see, look, I'm glancing. I'm glancing and glancing back. That's all you have to do, all right? And ensure that mother, mother-in-law, father-in-law, uncle, husband, brother, nobody is in the room except people who are friendly and smile at you. And tell the person who is shooting you, if you're asking someone to help you with it, to keep on smiling at you. Then you won't feel so nervous. And if you do, Knock them all out of the room, close the door, and just record it. For example, I never have my son and brother in the room when I'm recording something because they keep making faces and laughing at me and sniggering at me, particularly my brother. So I never have him in the room, and I never even invite him for any of my lectures because he just keeps sniggering and laughing. He's my sibling, after all. OK. So I'm not sure, uh, you know, if it might have been covered in uh, in your talk as well. So Pankaj wants to know that because she's coming only with the idea and do not have any product or any testimonial about her venture. Mm. So one thing that she should keep in mind while shooting the video, because she just started with an idea. Yeah. So talk about your idea. Um, who, who asked this question? Pankaj. Yes, ma'am. Pankaj. Right. So Pankaj. Talk about your idea. Talk about who this idea is going to benefit. If you have met some customers, talk about what they said, right? And give your story about why you came up with this idea in the first place, like my COVID story, right? It's completely fabricated. So uh, talk about how you came up with this idea and why you think it is going to be of benefit to anybody. Who is it going to benefit and why, right? And that is the way I want you to speak. So it doesn't matter if you don't have data or, you know, you don't have a very fancy uh, presentation. It's all about your conviction that your idea is the right one. And why? what you need to focus on in this is you have an idea, great. Who is that idea going to benefit and why should they buy your product, which is your competitive advantage. That is what you need to cover, which means you need to have thought it through. It can't be, oh, I got up this morning and I came out with an idea. That's not what's going to get you the incubation. The incubation you're going to get if you have a strong idea, which you have kind of thought through. Obviously, you're not expected to know everything about it, but at least you have thought it through and you're in control of the idea. The idea is not in control of you. That's all that is expected of you at this point. Um, so Malvika, one um, other thing is like uh, some of them are not uh, fluent in English. Mm -hmm. So they were saying that when they actually share the idea in their uh, mother tongue or, um, you know, combining English with their uh, native language, it mm -hmm. would be much more fluent. So in those cases, what should they be doing? All right. Uh, I strongly believe that language is not a barrier. Uh, you're going to be presenting to people who may or may not know your mother tongue. I think a Hindi-English combination is fine. There's no problem doing that. But other languages may be an issue. Um, Aarti, I'm not sure whether we have people who understand all languages at NSR cell. We don't. Not at this point of time. Right. Yeah. So my point is, even if you're going to speak in your local languages, just suppose you're very, very conversant in Odia. You're not able to speak English at all. That's fine. Just get a caption put at the bottom with whatever you're saying in English or give a script 
give a script in English, get someone to just translate whatever you've said. Anyway, you're going to write it out in Odia before you speak, right? Get a translation done in English by someone you know and attach it. You have a facility to attach it as a Word document to do that. But don't make language a barrier to the presentation. Um, I think we will, this would probably be the uh, last question. Some of them um, have co-founders who are uh, either with women or uh, male. Um, so they are asking if they can use them also as part of the video pitch. I don't think so. No. Especially not if they're men. Because what will happen is you will become the second string to the field. It happens automatically. A man is much more dominant and he will take over. Now, if you have a co-founder um, who is equally, uh, who has done or has a very active role to play, not just an investor, then maybe it makes sense if the two of you gel together. It's like a jugal bandi, right? So if you can do a jugal bandi, it may be interesting. But if both of you are confused, then it'll become like one of those college things, you know? Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you today? I'm fine today. You know, it'll, it'll kind of look very awkward. So my recommendation is, say that I have a co-founder, mention her by name, maybe even show her in the video, show a picture of her, and let it be a one-person show. That way, there will be no diffusion of focus. The moment the other person comes in, you will waste about 10, 15 seconds, camera to pan, turn, all of that. So my my advice, keep it single person. If the man is, a, if your co-founder is a man, then completely avoid him from the video. This is supposed to be a woman's program, right? And he will tend to dominate uh, the whole thing. It happens, it's an automatic human reaction. I'm sorry if I'm sounding politically incorrect, but that's the way I've seen so many presentations where it kind of, the, the power equation changes and that's not correct. You are the person, talk. Um, so Malvika, on that note, is there anything that you would share as um, tips for them before we close the uh, session? Okay. Um, have a conversation. Think about the whole thing as a conversation between you and your best friend. The moment you imagine your best friend or your mother, whoever your favorite person is, treat this as a conversation. And the fact that you're explaining this idea to someone who doesn't know anything about it, and frankly, doesn't care about it anyways, you're the one who cares about it. So can I get that other person, the person I am speaking to, to be as excited about this idea as I am? That is your purpose. Right? The words and all of that will come. You will build your organization or you will build your startup. But right now, I have an idea of what my robo made. And I want to talk to you about it. I want to tell you how I feel. How COVID, I'm, I'm having a conversation, okay? So this is just, uh, hear me out. I'm finding COVID very depressing. I was very excited initially uh, because I thought it would last for 30 days, but it's gone on for six months. And even at my age, I'm finding it very depressing. Aren't you? Right? Aren't you finding it? I don't know. Everything's, everything's fine. I have a roof over my head. I'm very comfortable in my home. I have a lovely home. But somehow, I think I'm missing meeting you. I'm, I think I'm missing meeting people. I, I know why we meet on Zoom or we're on the phone. I'm just missing that human interaction with people and my students, right? I love teaching. I, can, I do it very effectively on Zoom, but it's nice to tell a kid to get, wake up and go and wash his or her face, right? And that's what I miss uh, with COVID. So I'm sorry, that wasn't an official presentation. I'm just, that's the way I want you to talk to the camera. 
think of it as a friend that you're having a chat with and you wouldn't you wouldn't be shivering right talking to your friend you just talk normally and that's the use your hands we indians use our hands a lot don't wave them around like that just talk naturally with all the passion and feeling that comes from your heart that's all i have to say um thank you so much for your time malvika um wonderful presentation and all the um resources that you have shared i'm sure that uh, our learners will benefit out of it and uh, they will be able to come up with great video pitches yeah, i'll be most interested to see their pitches mm -hmm. let me see do send me a few of them so that i can take a look i want to see if my learning got translated but more importantly ladies um aarti will be sharing the the presentation that i just made uh, to you uh, with you so please keep that as reference it has the content structure and everything in it and please use it effectively all the best god bless you thanks mama